Citizens United. Our viewers may be sitting there thinking, that sounds familiar. Why does that sound so familiar? Citizens United. 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 25 years ago, we felt that Americans were eager to preserve the Founders' ideals of liberty and God-given rights, as our great President Ronald Reagan did so effectively during his presidency. Once you begin a great movement, there's no telling where it'll end. And so Citizens United was founded as an organization dedicated to preserving the values of our Founding Fathers, ideals that are at the very heart of our great nation. Through a combination of education, advocacy, and grassroots organization, our goal was then, and is still today, to reassert the traditional American values of limited government, freedom of enterprise, strong families, and national sovereignty and security. And with your support, we've made a tremendous impact for the conservative cause and America. I think when Citizens United began in 1988, conservatives were just starting to find their voice. They had a couple of think tanks, but as far as the conservative voice, there really wasn't any. You had Reagan, and, and sort of Reagan was the voice, but there wasn't a chorus behind Ronald Reagan. Citizens United was founded in 1988 by movement conservative Floyd Brown. From day one, we backed issues, candidates, and causes that resonated deeply with conservatives. Among the early issues that was critical to Citizens United was opposing D.C. statehood, as well as fighting for Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court, that he was being vilified by the left. In 1992, I came aboard as the political and communications director. If, the, if I did something wrong, it will come out in the special counsel. They will find the truth. Let them do it. Citizens United took the lead in investigating what we suspected were fraudulent Arkansas land deals involving President Clinton and Hillary Clinton. The scandal soon exploded and became known by one name, Whitewater. You know, there really needed to be a catalyst for having uh, serious questions asked, additional investigations done. It took somebody like Floyd Brown and Dave Bossie that were willing to ask questions, go to Arkansas, dig up information that wasn't being dug up anywhere else. And it was really a gutsy approach because it was quite clear from anyone who was looking at Clintons and the Clinton White House, they could be very, very tough on their critics. I got a phone call from a United States Senator asking me to come down to the Senate Whitewater Committee and work on that investigation. We were charged with the responsibility of getting rid of waste, fraud, and abuse in government, and we were determined to get to the bottom of it. And Dave Bossie was uh, at the forefront in making certain to, that we got to the heart and meat of the investigation. And when you get Dave Bossie uh, on the trail of activities like we thought were taking place, he's like a bloodhound. He was great. In 2001, I returned to become president of Citizens United. I like Dave Bossie a lot. He's just a super guy, family man, loves his children and his wife, very committed. The thing about Dave Bossie is that he doesn't sit back. He gets into the action. Dave is passionate, deeply committed to American liberty, pugnacious, likes to fight, has brilliant insights. You know, he's a real bulldog. He's a fighter, he's scrappy, he doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. David has an intuitive sense of wherever that fault line is to be right there with the, just the right people and the right resources in order to give us a chance to win those battles. As we grew, we created affiliates to increase our reach. We started Citizen United Political Victory Fund and the Presidential Coalition. These affiliates support true conservative candidates running for federal and state offices. David's vision for the organization focuses on building a conservative farm team. And I appreciated early on uh, his belief in me and his recognition that I was part of that conservative farm team. And I think he understands that the city councilmen and state representatives of today oftentimes are the state treasurers and others of tomorrow. But I mean every word of this. This is the most powerful documentary I've ever seen in my life.
Another way we've gotten our messages out is by producing some of the most hard-hitting and influential documentary films, television commercials, and web ads available. Through Citizens United Productions, we've shot all over the world, producing films with Newt and Callista Gingrich, Rick Santorum, Mike Huckabee, Michelle Bachman, Fred Thompson, and many other stars of the conservative movement. I think that the Citizens United documentaries have been incredibly important on so many different levels. Remember that the left controls Hollywood, they control entertainment, they control the movies, they control television, they control mass media, they control certainly journalism. And so what Citizens United has figured out is that through the media, they can in fact move public opinion. They can shape America and thereby shape Washington. And we did Celsius 4111. Dave Bossy made promises that day about when money would appear, when things would happen, what his involvement would be, how he would deal with this, and he was good to his word. I had never seen anyone invest himself as deeply as hardworking and scrupulously honest. And he has gone on to be just an extraordinary force. This national energy tax will cost the American people $2 trillion. We know that. I was telling a lot of very inconvenient truths, and he wanted to put my voice on screen, and we went forward with our message, and that was fire from the heartland. And we told the story of women, conservative women. These words have been called the most consequential in human history. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. I was excited because I had seen several of the movies that Citizens United has done, and I, and I was impressed by, number one, just the quality, the understanding that you have to speak both to the mind and to the heart, and that these were not just dry documentaries, but really did try to engage the viewer. Our films are often on the cutting edge of important issues. In 2005, Border War explored the issue of illegal immigration. Our production team was embedded by the Department of Homeland Security with a group of undercover Border Patrol agents in Nogales, Arizona. Many of our films have gone on to win film festival awards, including Perfect Valor, Nine Days That Changed the World, and Ronald Reagan, Rendezvous with Destiny. Margaret Thatcher praised him as one of the world's great leaders, and certainly of modern times. We here still move in twilight, but we have one beacon to guide us that Ronald Reagan never had. We have his example. I think that supporters like to know what's going on in Washington. They like to go beyond reading a fundraising letter or a proposal. The films bring to life the individuals behind these battles, but they also have an emotional component that's important to the supporters to see. But our films weren't just award winners. One of them changed history. You have gotten under the cover here into the very key question. Should the United States government be restricting free political speech? That's what you're arguing, isn't it? It, should it not absolutely be. is right on point. It, should we be able to, should the government be able to ban political speech? Well, before Citizens United, there was a huge imbalance in the political playing field that tilted heavily to the left. Frankly, I don't think that Congress thought about documentary films when they passed the statute. We thought that was wrong, and consequently, we went to court to undo that. And we felt it was very dangerous. It was definitely a major, important First Amendment issue and the right of the people to speak out against elected officials. The Supreme Court has ruled five to four today to allow corporations to spend money to pay for TV ads supporting or opposing political candidates. A monumental victory for Citizens United and more importantly for the First Amendment and the fundamental rights of people to participate in the political process and the marketplace of ideas. That decision, that case, is the most important free speech First Amendment case in a generation. Supreme Court today swept away rules that go back more than a century. MSNBC, CNN, and the so-called mainstream media hate this Supreme Court decision because it infringes on their desire to control the message. Democrats, not happy about this one. The ruling was not surprisingly upsetting to those on the left, but what was surprising was when President Obama took the time during the State of the Union address to attack the Citizens United decision. With all due deference to separation of powers, Last week, the Supreme Court reversed a century of law that I believe will open the floodgates for special interests, including foreign corporations, to spend without limit in our elections. 
justices of the Supreme Court were sitting as captive audiences. They had no warning that President Obama was going to speak out about it. When he did speak, he spoke inaccurately. He mischaracterized the decision, mischaracterized what the Supreme Court had done. And what was that decision about? Free political speech. They hate it. Citizens United, if it does nothing else for the rest of its existence, that case was seminal. I actually think that the Citizens United case is one of the best examples of a genuine strategy that I've seen in the years I've been in Washington. I think Dave believed passionately that the heart of American liberty is the right of every citizen, whether you agree or disagree, to get up and be heard, to speak, to have space in politics. And look, we're going to be watching them very closely, and I'll be back in court if they, if they uh, uh, act irresponsibly again. My name is David Bossi, I'm president of Citizens United. Our supporters now number over half a million, making Citizens United one of the most influential conservative nonprofits in the country. As we move ahead, we'll fight to safeguard our freedom, guided by the honesty, common sense, and goodwill of you, the members and supporters of Citizens United. And that's really what this organization is about. They, they believe in America and the essence of who we are, and the donor base does as well, and they see that this is a very effective voice that amplifies the truth in a way that no one else is doing, no one. I think the reason people donate is that they're looking for somebody who is deeply committed to the classic American positions, to American conservatism in its best, and to a willingness to take on the left. Well, the reason why the grassroots and so many people support support Citizens United is because they're effective. They don't just collect money and build buildings. They don't just collect money and pay salaries. You can actually see the tangible results when you support this organization, whether it's in the Supreme Court of the United States, whether it's in their films, whether it's in their mailings and so forth. Citizens United is on the front line. That's where Dave Bossy wants to be. That's where he always is. It's uplifting. I, I'm telling you, it's inspiring. They're reaching an audience. They've got half a million subscribers. They're probably reaching up to five, 10 million people and it makes a difference. It makes a difference. I'm sure that uh, Citizens United will be around in the second 25 years because it fulfills an important function, but also I think its accuracy and its truth will be appreciated as it has been in the past by the American people. They're the principles that founded the country. They're the principles that gave greatness and exceptionalism to the world. We've got to keep that going. Bossy gets it, and I'm with him all the way.